I was happy to watch the movie for the tenth time in ten years, and it was the best screening I ever had. I haven't seen it for ten years, yeah. but I, I remember yeah. actually. I remember sitting there, yeah. just seeing the the final test in this theater. Yeah. It was it was incredible. Yeah. And it makes much more sense when you see a three D movie like this one that is totally like shamanic uh, to see it without subtitles. The when the movie was shown in France, the, where I saw it for the first time, and then I bought the 3D Blu-ray, I have the 3D TV, you always get subtitles. And it's annoying because it makes like the, the whole trip, it turns into a kind of comic book because the letters are floating <laughs> in front. So uh, sometimes you, you, you wish that you could switch them off and you cannot. So I had an option on my 3D Blu-ray, I could switch it into German. So in German, I had no subtitles, but uh, I saw the movie in German once also. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's much better. It's like an art house movie. Well, I mean, total admiration. The, the, there are not many movies uh, that reach like a huge audience and make you dream. The, the probably King Kong, 2001, the Space Odyssey, and, and yours. I can yeah. think of many others, but yeah. yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Gaspar. Thank you. I'm more curious for you to tell. Uh, it was like a year ago that we spoke. Yeah. Uh, that, that's time I, I sent him a, a message. Uh, it happened to me, it happens in life that sometimes you have an accident. I had, um, I've been partying a lot three years ago f with my father and my friends for uh, Christmas. I was drinking, partying. Uh, Eating oysters. You've seen his films, e eating right? oysters. So you see what well, he talks about partying. You, and, you and, know and, and, and eating oysters. So I was poisoned with oysters. I was I drank a lot with my father. I partied with a friend who gave me something, whatever. And then one, one day, two days before New Year's Eve, I had a huge brain hemorrhage. In the middle of the afternoon, I was sent to the hospital and said, Oh, probably you're gonna die in five days from now. Probably you're gonna be yeah, uh, probably you're going to be weird for the rest of your life, but yeah. the, the, we, everything's going to happen. Like in the next four or five days, your life is in danger. So they put me in, in, a, in a little room. They gave me a lot of morphine, and I was very happy to try morphine for the first time in my life. But the, 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 so I always inject, I could press the button all the time. I have no memory of the first four days, so I don't remember the New Year's Eve, but I remember that on the 2nd or 3rd of January, they were playing gravity on TV and I had a very little monitor at the other end of the of the of my little room and uh, I was stuck there and it was in French it was dubbed into French and I enjoyed the movie more than when I saw 2001 and I and I was uh, six years old because it was all about how someone can survive against you now all dangers and uh, and uh, the 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 camera one of the particularities of your movie is that the camera is spinning all the time and you you're like floating in space there is no north no south no east no west no right no left whatever. and uh, and so everything was spinning on the, on the on the camera but actually i thought that that was the real world and it was my own room spinning around i said oh if 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 sandra manages to survive I can also survive today. It's like the, the night of my death or, or back to life uh, issue. And uh, then George Clooney comes and says, oh, it's time to go back home and say, oh, she can survive. I can survive too. And then hopefully uh, two weeks later, I came out. I was a junkie two weeks later, but <laughs> <laughs> your, your movie brought me back to life. <laughs> 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 but I had seen already the movie every year since it was released. It's a, but the uh, best I, I've been in situations that are similar to yours, and, and then you'll talk because I talk too much. But, no, no, uh, I, I prefer. But, but uh, these kind of movies, I guess if you start them, it's because you don't know how complex they are. I watched last night before coming here all the extras of the Blu ray, not the movie because I wanted to see it here, but I watched all the extras. And the more. I watched the excess of how you made this movie, the less I understand and the more I'm in admiration in front of you. Well, if we go back and look at the films we did in the past, uh, it's very strange. I, 
I have I, I have never seen any of my films ever since I finished them because I, it's a weird experience. I'm trying to remember and to explain why you did it. And there's only and and I, and I think it's a serious. It's not a joke. There are only two factors that make you make films. Is one is uh, complete irresponsibility and ignorance, because. Going back, even I don't even remember how we did the film. I could not. Is is as, as as if you don't recognize who did that film. You you know what I mean? Is I was asking you about like try to remember when you did Enter the Void. I had a co-director, the guy who's doing all the visual effects, that knew how to do the movie. I didn't know. <laughs> I knew how to get the money lying to my producers, but I didn't know how to make the movie. I did and exactly then I a, the same a, thing. So there you go. Visual effects supervisor. <laughs> there you go. We, I had an amazing <laughs> effects supervisor, and I was lying to the producer, to the studio, and yeah, yeah, and bullshit my way through. That is the way. They they said that at, when um, <laughs> first, I'm so ignorant that when I finished the script, I called Chivo, the cinematographer says, hey, here's the script. He read it, he says, well, it's really cool. I says, yes, yes, says, we can shoot it in three weeks against a black backdrop. And it's just like some wires and we have her just spinning in wires. And he says, I don't think so. He says, yeah, let's try it. And, and we tried it. It was, it was great. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it was really great in the sense that. It looked like a. Yeah. Is, Maybe it was a more it's interesting European film. movie from the 60s. Yeah. No, no, beyond that, like a combination of that and a, a, a B or C movie of Hollywood in the 50s. So it was like a weird combination of the two things. And, and then we tried to figure out how to do it. And we spoke with, uh, with Fincher, uh, with David Fincher. And, and he said, well, uh, you can do it. There's no technology for that. And then with James Cameron, he said, well, you will be able to do it in five, six years. Right now, the technology is not there. And they both were right. I mean, like uh, it took five years to de develop the whole thing until we shot it. But we were just, again, bullshitting our way. But, but the movie that made me love 3D was yours. It was not uh, James Cameron's avatar. <laughs> Seriously, uh, just like... A it, it probably also because uh, the first two takes are so long, you feel you are in a space and you, actually it, it's a rare movie in which you forget that you're watching a movie. You're just floating. It, it does not happen with most of the other 3D movies, especially the the superhero Marvel movies well, that, that are cut every day. They, they change the, 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 you go to another cut every three seconds. That's so it, it doesn't that work. doesn't work. That doesn't work. Is there, there, there are a couple of tools that are used in, the, in, in a lot of these big, big blockbuster movies that are tools that are completely wrongly used. One is 3D because there are like zillions of cuts and, and 3D doesn't work with so many. And also... Cuts and long lenses. You need to have wider, wider lenses and and to hold the shot, and to have foregrounds, backgrounds, and so on. And the other thing is Atmos. Atmos. All these superhero films they play Atmos for volume, and then you cancel the whole thing. The whole point of Atmos is the spread of the sound, and it's not about loudness, but about spread. And that's another thing that those superhero films they don't do. My favorite superhero is Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that the, the lesson today is that the best way of watching this film is in French with morphine. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the French dubbing was good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, but uh, no, when you watch it, I, it was really like a little Super 8 movie on, on the other side of the room. But it still works. It, it, it was Orson Welles says, uh, who uh, once when I was uh, in a film school, we attended a class, master class of Orson Welles and said, well, a good movie will be a good movie on Super 8, 35, 16, CinemaScope, whatever. Uh, and a bad movie will always be a bad movie. But uh, actually, that, that experience of seeing your movie that I had seen in, on a big screen in 3D 
on a little screen in 2D dubbed into French was as intense. Also, the, the drug really helped, but <laughs> <laughs> and the situation yeah. really helped. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I know. Uh, I think I'll keep on watching over and over the, the movie every year. Well, uh. you're the one. <laughs> that's that's amazing. How how did you initially decide to do a movie where you totally unconscious or you how much you saw like in advance? When you had the idea, you said it would take you one year, two years. How much would it cost? How do we? Because no, the, 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 it's sometimes a little dream becomes a big dream, and then the dream becomes much bigger than the dream well, I itself. I thought it was going to be cheaper yeah. uh, at the beginning, and then end up not being as expensive for what it is. But actually, the thing is, uh, it happened a little bit because you were like uh, after partying and stuff. I just had life. Uh, like uh, like uh, running over me, yeah. and uh, the film that I was supposed to do fell apart, yeah. and I needed a job and and I need to pay rents and stuff, and that's the reason why most directors do movies. Yeah, exactly. They have rents to pay. They never tell it, but he tells it. <laughs> he tells it. <laughs> yeah, he said that's the reason. We, it, well, Fellini also said it, yeah. and um, uh, and. Uh, I need to come up with an idea very quickly. And I was with Jonas, uh, uh, who you know, my son, who's also a director and a writer, who has written a screenplay that later on he directed, that is great, called Desierto. And I have read it and said, and what I love is that it's a script with very little dialogue, and everything was led by the action. And we start talking about it, and there are two kind of the models that we took for this film are two that I'm sure this completely, they are not obvious choices for this. One was Duel, the Spielberg, and the other one was Dead Manscapes. That I haven't seen. Bresson. Uh, 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 dead, dead man, ah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Exactamente. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we uh, and it was the, this idea of of doing a film in which the story is whatever there's a story is in the language, in the film language. You know that is not so much about about the plots and the melodrama and the subplots and all of that stuff, but it was more about the experience, the cinematic experience itself. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that, that carries the whole thing. That I think is something I relate so much from your films, mm -hmm. because in your films, definitely the cinematic aspect of it, the cinematic drive is what is, is a bigger drive than the story. Yeah. Uh, I think, for example, someone who can see the movie, uh, who doesn't speak English, who sees the movie without subtitles, he would still enjoy it from the beginning to the end. Uh, in my movies, also like the the cinematic aspect, especially in Enter the Void, uh, we're like trying to create a dream. I think in your movie, you wanted to create a dream, like some directors try, Fellini, but Kubrick tried, but uh, most of them don't achieve it. You did. I think that you're kind of <laughs> okay. You're going to start hearing booze right now from a lot of people. <laughs> He's not afraid of saying things and being unpopular and politically incorrect. Look at you. <laughs> I, 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 in that one, I disagree. Well, which movies really impress you in your life? Is there any movie that for you was shamanic enough that you say, "Well, I was different before I saw the movie"? Oh, they've been many. Which ones? Like since I was. Since you started, since I your started, human career. The first Poseidon adventure. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That Melody. Was... Melody. <laughs> there you go. Another one. Yeah. And look, Melody is is so surprising that uh, people in in the UK. I haven't found people in the UK that I know this film Melody, and it's a it's a it's a British film. It's a British film with the same couple who play Oliver in the old uh, in the old musical, Mark Lester and Jack Wilde, and it's a beautiful love story 
between two preteens. And the thing is that the music is composed by the Bee Gees. Yeah. The amazing thing is that that film is a cult film in Mexico. It's a cult film in Japan. In Argentina, it's where I saw it as a kid. It's a cult film in Argentina, but nobody knows it. No, no, nobody knows about that. The, I highly recommend for you guys to watch Melody. It's, a, it's really a treat. It made you... It's also called here, Seal with a Loving Kiss. That was the other title. It made me want to grow up. Probably you the same. You, it's, a, it's a movie about a boy falling in love with a girl. It makes yeah. you want to, to grow up and... I'm falling, I'm falling in love. <laughs> I'm falling in love yeah. I still want to grow up, but <laughs> but um, yeah, and the and then the rest of the journey where we're talking about the other thing was really a lot of ignorance and and trying to figure out is once that you're in the drive in the tunnel you, you call it a while ago when, when you're in the tunnel yeah. you you don't kind of you only try to figure out how to do it you don't accept that you cannot do it. So there's- And you, you're a perfectionist. I can tell when I see a movie, I don't, uh, you're a perfectionist who certainly was working seven days a week, uh, 12 hours a day for five years. Okay. Yes, I'm a perfectionist maybe, but also I'm lazy. I don't work that much. <laughs> I don't work, if I can avoid it, I don't work seven days a week. And so it just takes for longer. It's, it's part of the equation. And, uh, but then I had amazing collaborators. There was Chivo and Tim Weber, the production designer, the visual effects supervisor, sorry. And, uh, and the three of us together was trying to, to come out with solutions. Yeah. And Tim is like incredible. He has just this array of tools and, and ideas. And I think that the combination was like the perfect combination to, to, make this happen. Chivo was in a concert. I try to remember which was the band that he was just obsessed with the with the, with the, with the concert. And uh, but what he was looking at was at, at the LEDs. <laughs> and uh, and is when when he had the idea of because part of the challenge is how how to do when a character is spinning all the time, yeah. the interactive lighting and uh, and is when it was the idea of the LEDs. Now LEDs are used a lot. There's in the volume that they call it. That now all the all the, a lot of films they shoot with this background that is LEDs. At that time, nobody had done it. Also because the LEDs were not uh, calibrated for film. Yeah. We had to get special LEDs made and stuff to 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 be able to do the, that interactive light. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I was watching last night the extras of the of the Blu-ray, and then uh, there is one particularity: the the whole movie that's probably cinematically speaking the best three D ever on a film uh, was shot in two D with a, like with a uh, los motores esos uh, robots with, with the robots, in robots uh, yeah. spinning around the actors with this 2d camera <laughs> inside the light box the that that was like uh in which the light was turning around the characters and they were also put in a cage that was moving so everything was spinning the light the 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 the, the cage except the actor what uh, the whole point was if you're in, in zero gravity on space yeah you're spinning but you don't get the centrifugal, the, the force, you know, you don't uh, get uh, all of that uh, stuff. So uh. when we try spinning the actors, you feel it. So it was how to keep the actors static and everything else to move around them. So it was like a big cube made of LEDs in which the actor was in the center. But it, it had never, ever been done before. It was like... It a, was, no, it was uh, the first time. Uh, and uh, and then we use... Uh, uh, robots, the ones that they used to build cars, and we put cameras, and it was just all around. The only thing was that uh, sometimes the camera would go very fast all the way to this distance. And when we were testing the whole thing, and we had a guy next to the actor with a big box with a big red button, just like like to, to, to go like that. And she and I, we would look at that saying, my God, 
with the speed of that thing, even if this guy has the best reflexes, you know? And two days before we start shooting, we had a, a mannequin where the, where the actor was just to, to rehearse and test. And the camera went through the head of the... Of, we never told Sandra about that. Well, yeah, it was... Uh, so it was... We were learning. I, I'm glad that that thing happened in the rehearsal and not... Not, not with Sandra, but so you never use the the 3D cameras with two lenses, or is never, any, no, never, not even reason, for the last scene. I t tell you the reason why, oh. because it's, uh, it's, it's truth of the matter is that the film is an animated film. Like while we were shooting, all the stuff that you see when we were shooting in the in the in the cube, oh. in the in the, the light box, um, it was just the faces all the suits and everything else, the hands and everything else, when they are in outer space, those are animations, those are CG rendered. So uh, only the parts inside the, the space station and the, and the capsule, those are like the, the actor in full. And, and what we did is, is uh, if you're going to be animating, it doesn't make sense to do 3D because anyway you're going to do the 3D in the animation. Even for the last scene when she comes out no, of the that water. that one we it was a whole a whole process of turning that into 3D. Because also I, I tried once I did a movie in 3D I, and yeah, then yeah. I, I had one or two scenes that I I shot with just one camera and then I, I felt it was very difficult to do a 3D image out of a 2D image. We did many tests and finally we achieved it, but it's not so easy. So I I'm know, surprised know, how good your, your, your 3D well, works. Is, it was just like that that scene that you did converting 2D right. into 3D, yeah. that it was a pain. Yeah. It was like that, but for the whole, not for the whole film, because the animated parts, those were easy. Yeah. It was more difficult when you were with the real act, with the actors in yeah. full body. That was that was more problematic, but yeah, the film was designed same as your film. That from the get go, it was designed for three D. So uh, actually, he used to say that in the in the front of the of the screenplay. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, it was because I I wanted to sell it very quickly. So I said, <laughs> "Gravity, a space adventure in three D." <laughs> they didn't like it, and I, actually, my dream was one of those pulp space films in the 50s yeah. you know it's uh but it's much more than that at the end it's like when those pulp films in the 50s are much more than th that you know it's like a lot of those pulp b are S solid green solid green for another one <laughs> there you go <laughs> rollerball <laughs> no rollerball no, no. <laughs> <laughs>